This podcast is brought to you by Digital Heaven, the hottest tools for the coolest apps. Hi, and welcome to Hot Tips. I'm Martin Baker. In this episode, some useful keyboard shortcuts for working with keyframes in Final Cut Pro. Let's start with a shortcut for setting keyframes on motion tab parameters. I'm going to animate this wildly optimistic newspaper headline graphic by rotating and scaling it from the center of the canvas. If I open the clip into the viewer and select the motion tab, you can see that I've already scaled the clip down and also rotated it slightly. This will be the end position of the animation. So I'm going to set a keyframe one second into the clip. Pressing shift right arrow moves the playhead one second later. And now I'll press control K for the add motion keyframe command. This shortcut adds a keyframe to the basic motion, crop and distort sets of parameters. So there's no need to add keyframes individually. Any changes I now make to these parameters will automatically be keyframed. So I'll press Shift I to move the playhead to the first frame of the clip and set the scale to 0%. Now let's make it spin. So holding down the Shift key, which makes the values snap to 45 degree angles, let's spin the image anti clockwise three times and see how it looks. Okay, pretty good. So that's keyframes on motion parameters. But what about audio? Well, there's a little known shortcut for audio keyframes too. Let's imagine I want to create two keyframes to fade the music track out. I'll just pause at the frame that I want to start the fade and press Command Option K. This creates a keyframe at the current frame, and the nice thing about using the shortcut is there's no chance of accidentally changing the audio level, which can sometimes be a problem when adding keyframes with the pen tool. So let's play on and create a second keyframe right here. Now I can drag the level of the second keyframe all the way down and the music now fades out. Now you might be thinking, how does Final Cut Pro know which audio clips to add the keyframe to? Well, the answer is that it uses the lowest auto-selected track. But in all honesty, if you're dealing with many audio tracks, you might find it easier to select a clip before using the shortcut. If any clips are selected, then the keyframes are added to those clips, and the auto-select buttons are ignored. Let's finish off with some shortcuts for moving between keyframes. You probably already know that you can move the playhead to the previous and next keyframes in the viewer by clicking the tiny little arrow buttons. But there's also a much easier way. Pressing Shift K will move the playhead to the next keyframe and Option K moves it to the previous keyframe. This is a really useful shortcut and it works in the viewer, canvas and timeline windows. Again, it uses the auto select buttons, but you can quickly override this by selecting a clip. So for example, if I select the music clip, then when I use Shift K and Option K, the playhead only locates to the keyframes on that clip and ignores the keyframes set on the newspaper graphic. That wraps things up for this time. Don't forget you can get all future episodes of Hot Tips automatically by subscribing to the podcast from our website. Thanks for watching. Digital Heaven, the hottest tools for the coolest apps. Find out more at digitalheaven.co.uk.